Aloha. Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apatel, your host, and today's title is Today's GOP. Speaker McCarthy's out. A uh, historic moment took place this week, and that is uh, the House Speaker of the House of Representatives is out, out of a job. The position is vacant. Why is that? Well, we have this thing called the MAGA GOP in, in, the, in Congress, the House of Representatives, and the MAGA GOP is the tail that wags the dog. And who's the tail? Apparently it's Matt Gates. Matt Gates didn't like the fact that Kevin McCarthy uh, worked with the Democrats, a, a grievous sin, worked with the Democrats to keep the government open and so that it did not shut down, and he negotiated uh, that, that portion of, um, he struck the bargain to keep the government running. Well, that was a bridge too far for uh, Matt Gates, and the vote took place, and as I mentioned, Kevin McCarthy's out of a job. So no matter what the GOP would have gotten, the mega GOP specifically, it would not have been a good enough. And why is that? Because Donald Trump wanted the government shut down. And we all know that the government uh, shutdown is what Trump, basically it gets to exercise his power and influence. And bottom line is the GOP is now Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the GOP. So with that topic, we're going to talk about what the GOP looks like today. And with me is my great co-host, Jay Fidel. Good morning, Jay. Morning, Tim. You know, <clears throat> what is the GOP today? And where it? Where is the GOP going to look like in 2024? And how does these? Uh, how do we connect the dots with the events that we see taking place, specifically with McCar McCarthy out of a job? Well, you know, we've been asking ourselves the question: you know, can, can the base still like the GOP? Can the base still like Trump? Um, and he managed to get by until now. But I ask myself the question. I'm not in the base, by the way, Tim. I ask myself the question, you know, how, how are they seeing this? How are they seeing this, this chaos in the House of Representatives? Chaos with a capital C. In fact, it's all caps. Um, how do they see his behavior in court, um, you know, and his outbursts in court about attacking them? law clerks and the like, um, how do they see that? They have got to see what he's really about. On the other hand, I don't convince myself when I answer that, so it may be the base still supports it. It may be the prognosticators who prognosticate that he will win the election in November still support him. But, but from a rational point of view, this is just another you know chink in the armor. This is just another keystone dropping out of the arch. I can't imagine how anybody would support him. And we all know that he's controlling Matt Gates, And we all know that these bizarre moves of Matt Gates, and for that matter, uh, Kevin McCarthy, are coming from Trump. Um, that's my reaction. You know, recently we had um, James Carville, a uh, former uh, Clinton uh, advisor, um, also nicknamed the Raging Cajun. Uh, he opined about something, that is, today's GOP, what, what, does it, what does it mean if you're going to vote for the GOP? And, and some of the things he mentioned I, you know, really struck a chord. Um, instead of drug costs, trying to get prescription costs down, uh, they seem hell-bent on impeaching Biden with virtually no evidence that supports an impeachment. So they're in that impeachment process or that impeachment inquiry, spending a lot of time and energy in, in areas like that. Or uh, instead of trying to restore voting rights um, or making voting more fair or or open the access to other voters uh, via mail ballots. Uh, instead of working on legislation like that, we got um, them spending a majority of their time trying to vindicate Donald Trump that he's not a crook. Uh, what else? Well, how about women's health care? Uh, let's get, you know, they're spent all their time trying to get a national uh, ban on abortion, which includes incest and rape, of all things. So um, their time spent and their energy spent really doesn't seem to be so much centered on policy, but uh, cult of personality. And who's the cult of personality? Of course, it's Donald Trump. Uh, Jay, can you think of other things that the GOP now kind of represents? That's their trademark, their hallmark of when you think of GOP, you think of other things, uh, other positions they're taking? Guns. Guns. Guns and shooting children in school. Guns and shooting people on the street. 
Um, so uh, then, of course, of course, and, and here's one for you. Um, so they accepted funding uh, for Ukraine. Um, the, the deal, quote, that, um, that Kevin McCarthy struck in his moment of clarity with Democrats excluded further uh, uh, aid and weapons to Ukraine. Why that? Why that exclusion? It's so bizarre. It's not only that these people don't care about the country or all those issues we've just mentioned, um, and they don't care about democracy and the Constitution and the rule of law. Uh, it's that they don't care about the world. They don't care about Europe. They don't care about the, the liberal world order. They're completely upside down on everything. They're into destruction. And uh, I guess that comes from Donald Trump, too. But, but I, I just wish I had been a fly on the wall um, when they decided to exclude aid to Ukraine. What was that about? So, I mean, it's like everything backward, everything upside down, everything destructive and negative, but especially that one. You see, you know, we're in space. You know, I think you just asked the rhetorical question. You answered, actually, is it's, it's coming from Donald Trump and... I don't know, but over the years, I, I've seen Donald Trump be more than supportive to dictators around the world, and speci spe specifically Putin. And I, I think Donald Trump, along with his mega GOP, wished to see Putin succeed uh, over Ukraine. And then other uh, you know, desires that Putin has in the world, uh, they support that too. And I, I don't know where that's coming from or know why that's the case. But it is the case, and uh, a vote for Trump is a vote for Putin, hands down, straight across the board. That's how it is. Yeah, of all the things to be accepted, you know, um, Ukraine. So I say to myself, this is consistent, just as you suggest, with some nefarious relationship between Trump and Putin. Putin has got something on Trump. Trump wants something badly from Putin. And the two of them are connected at the hip, just as they were in the 2016 election, just as they were uh, when Trump tried to corrupt the FBI, the stopping an investigation into that relationship, and the Mueller report to stop, you know, revealing what, what was going on in that relationship. It's been all the way through. And one has to conclude just rationally, just you and me using our critical thinking, that there's really an unholy relationship, and uh, Trump has, uh, rather Putin has Trump. Uh, this is this is uh, very disturbing, and it means, of course, uh, that we all know this too. That if Trump is elected, reelected, gets back into the Oval Office on day one, just as he said, uh, he will hand Ukraine to Putin, and it will be the end of the liberal world order. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that because that is the one thing that sticks out from this whole affair with McCarthy. Good point. Uh, I'd like to talk about some other characteristics of our current GOP. And I I always try to separate GOP from MAGA GOP, but that line is severely blurred now in my mind. And um, so let's go over a couple more characteristics. Um, let's look at the GOP and their, their cultural... Um, how should I say, their cultural possession of uh, rejection of science, specifically climate change, the complete rejection of climate change. Uh, also, let's look at their, their behavior during COVID, a rejection of science as it comes to um, immunizations and the nature of the disease to begin with. So what's that all about, Jay? Um, a rejection of science. Why? Is that a Donald Trump influence or, or is it uh, beyond Donald Trump that they somehow... Uh, embrace or just dis have a disdain for education and, and, and science, which is part of education. And it's all pubescent. And it is from Donald Trump, who is pubescent. Um, you know, when you remember back to high school, you remember there was always a bully in the crowd who had it backward. And uh, whatever you said, he would insult you. Uh, whatever position you took, he would take the opposite one. Uh, just to try to show that he knew more, was better, and you were less. It's a kind of national insult. And um, it comes from him. This has got to come from him. And he's managed to ingrain it 
in the GOP. He's managed to ingrain it in a lot of people in the country. It's all about destructive positions. Whatever position Biden takes, Trump will take the opposite. Whatever position Biden takes, the GOP will take the opposite. So in the case of climate change, I mean, any rational human being in, in the planet knows how dangerous. How many wildfires do you need to have? How many floods and rainstorms do you need to have? Uh, how many examples of Mother Nature getting back at us do you need to have? And yet, these guys deny climate change. Extraordinary. And come out of the confusion and the, the lethal confusion over COVID, where Trump mucked it up to a fairly well during the administration. Um, they're saying, oh, he was right. It's just a little sniffle. Um, and the, you know, the, the CDC was wrong and so forth. It has, it has a number of effects. The first effect is to confuse everybody with, with lies. And the second effect is to distance them from government, to undermine um, you know, the authority that government has or should have about science. So I feel that it's not based on, on even an analysis. It's based only on trying to destroy the country, trying to destroy the other side. Uh, tried to take a position that is adverse to everything. And in that way, Tim, in that way, uh, developing more power. Um, it's really the worst thing that can happen in a democracy. Clearly. You know, let's look at the twin brother of the rejection of science, and that is the, uh, the embrace of conspiracy theories. A uh, number of people in Congress, and I'm thinking of Marjorie Taylor Greene as one of them, um, seems to be a um, full-throated support of some of these wackadoodle conspiracy theories. And I'm thinking of the one uh, back in 2018 where she accused um, the Jewish, uh, Jewish space lasers uh, creating the um, wildfires of Northern California. Uh, but she was dead serious. This was not a joke. And so how did, how did the GOP, a, a rational, sane party, maybe a little, you know, a little conservative, not so uh, caring about certain things, but I was a GOP for a long time, and I just don't know how a, a, a smart-thinking party like that could just go off the rails and adopt so many conspiracy theories. I'm not saying the whole party has adopted conspiracy theories, but I'm saying there's a significant number of them that embrace these kind of wackadoodle uh, concepts. Your thoughts on that? No. I, you know, the Republican Party was a rational choice 20 years ago, um, but it is no longer a rational choice. It has changed. It has morphed into some sort of, um, you know, crazy animal. And it is populated with people who are crazy animals who follow Trump, who are part of the cult. And so you can never see, you know, it's, it's nomenclature, it's icons. So if Trump stands in front of a lot of American flags, does that make him a patriot? Or any of his you know, uh, uh, acolytes, they stand in front of American flag. Does that make them patriots? No, it doesn't. It's just using symbols. And GOP, it's a symbol. It goes way back. But it's not the same as it was. And it has morphed into something very ugly in, in the recent past. Under Trump, he's managed to touch, touch something and use primarying as a technique and somehow separate them from rationality. You know, I, I remember a friend of mine told me that years ago, if you walk through the halls of Congress, um, you, would feel, you would feel a sense of prestige. Uh, with Republicans and Democrats alike, uh, these were the leaders of the country. Uh, they looked good. They looked smart. They dressed well. Uh, they had, uh, you know, curricula vitae. Uh, that, was, that was valuable and it qualified them to lead the country. And they did, in their own way, lead the country. Now you walk through Congress and you see it, a bunch of jerks um, because uh, so many of them have been in the media saying jerky things and doing jerky things on the floor. And so it's not the same. It is not the Republican Party that people used to know. And I think a lot of people are fooled. Oh, Republican. It must be like the Republican Party. It is not the Republican Party. It's the Trump Party. And what is troubling is it's not so much that, uh, you know, there are tinfoil uh, spacemen out there uh, driving Marjorie Taylor Greene is that the people on her left and the people on her right, the people in front of her and behind her, uh, her, her co-quote Republicans, end quote, they, they let it happen. They should be shouting her down as a moron. 
all of them together now, but they don't do that. And so I lay it on. Well, them. why do you think it, it is? Why, why do you think they're mum about that specific thing? Because it's not just conspiracy theories. It's a whole host of things they should be sparking up about. Well, why is that, Jay, in your opinion? Oh, I think it's Trump. Trump has had the effect of scaring people into, you know, being passive. And uh, if, if you uh, attack him, you're going to get his retribution uh, and his wrath. And he's going to do something to kick you out of office or publicly insult you or who knows what. Or get his, get his base to attack him physically with a hammer, whatever it may be. Um, and, and so that, that's one thing. But the other thing is that these people are, they think that Marjorie Taylor Greene is an agent of Trump, represents Trump. So if they attack her, they're afraid that Trump will come for them and the process will be the same because he stands with her. Same thing with uh, Matt Gates. same thing. And so uh, it's Trump's influence as a, not only as a, um, a guy who has no, no, no policy except to destroy the country, um, but, but who is uh, out there to destroy the independent thinking of all the people in Congress. He's working hard at it, and somehow he's found the sweet spot, and he's found an awful lot of people in the House who go along with his craziness, and are afraid to stop those who represent him. Well, is this two important things you just mentioned that Trump's agenda is to destroy the country and destroy the independent thinking of Congress, and he does so by fear and intimidation, which I still don't understand. Uh, you know, we just went through a, a, a kind of a long list of things that are characteristics of today's GOP. But let me just suggest the one that comes, comes to my mind time and time again, and I'll be thinking about in the 2024 election campaign. And that is the GOP is looking to support and elect a strong leader, the strong man. And that means set aside the rule of law that we currently um, base our country on, uh, the judicial independence of the Department of Justice, FBI, CIA, all, all, the, all the agencies that fall under the Department of Justice, um, nullify or um, uh, diminish the effectiveness of the media, the press, uh, fill them with um, the same intimidation, if you will, uh, that they should not report on anything that's critical about Donald Trump. And last but not least, he will clean out the ranks of the federal government uh, to make sure that they're replaced by his loyal lackeys that um, don't have a, any oath to the Constitution, but an oath to Donald Trump. Those seems to be the big characteristic that I see for 2024. Uh, what do you see? I see the same thing that happened in Germany and uh, Italy, and for that matter, Russia. Um, I, I see uh, a population that is, that is being swept into a, a fascist state. There are people like Trump and they don't realize that he's a fascist. They don't realize what he will do when he gets into office, how he will destroy uh, independent thinking, independent reporting, how he will destroy independent, he will destroy Congress. He has gone a long way to destroy the Supreme Court already. Our government is at great risk. And when he gets in, as he gets in, um, it, it will be the pennies on the eyes. He alone will do everything. He will be a complete fascist. And you better run for the hills, Tim, um, because I think at that point in time, the country will, will n not be comfortable for you or me. So what, what we have here um, is a situation that has been actually growing for a long time. And he has been the, the, the catalytic force. But we have a situation where kids do not study civics in school. You know, everybody says all oh, that, you know, you know, protect the teachers uh, from burning books and all the, and control, and the, you know, the, the census controlling the curriculum and all that. The fact is the school has, the schools have not been up to snuff. And Trump did a lot, uh, you know, during his one term, uh, where he accelerated that. So you have, how long does it take? One generation, two generations, where the kids don't understand anything about government. They don't understand the three branches of, of government. They don't understand anything that happens in Congress or the Supreme Court. Well, we had a president that didn't, uh, didn't understand it as well. Yeah, thank you. That's true. And he spread that. So the result is you have an ignorant country who doesn't know the difference um, between doing it right, doing it democratically or not. 
and they go along on his uh, on his freight train. So um, I I think it's 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 um, it's fertile ground, and he is the catalytic agent that is turning it. And I think that um, uh, the country gets what it deserves. You know, we just talked about him hollowing out the Department of Justice. I want to throw out an idea that he also wants to do the same thing about the United States military. Um, remove the generals that um, take an oath to the Constitution, the support of the Constitution, and fill it with uh, an oath to the great leader, Donald Trump. Uh, we've seen some examples of that recently where he vehemently, I mean, basically said that General Milley needs to be executed uh, for his past comments and and total lack of uh, support and loyalty to Donald Trump, whereas General Milley was taking his oath to office for the Constitution and the preservation of the Constitution and not involve the military in uh, Donald Trump's political agenda. Your thoughts about Donald Trump's influence in the past and moving forward, uh, if he gets another shot at it, what will the military look like? That leads to a sad answer, actually. You know, an, uh, an autocrat and a fascist uh, will, will try to destroy the press, destroy, destroy the legal profession, <clears throat> destroy the justice system, and he will um, try to bring people in that will support him. He will corrupt the FBI, who corrupt the intelligence agencies, and he will corrupt the military. Remember all the military people he had around him in violation of the law, you know, they're not supposed to um, get into the White House uh, within X years, I think, uh, of the time they served, but he appointed them anyway, surrounded himself with military. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to control the military. Remember, too, uh, that when Black Lives Matter became uh, you know, somewhat threatening to him, uh, he was going to use the military under the, quote, Insurrection Act to squash that protest. He was going to use troops um, to squash that. He was ready to do it, and his uh, more sane advisors told him not to do that. Um, but the reality is he sees the military as an instrument by which he can enhance his power. That's why he appointed all his military people in you know, in his cabinet around him as advisors and so forth. And um, although Mark Milley recently made a speech telling the members of the armed forces that they uh, sworn to protect the Constitution, it's an impassioned speech, so much so that uh, Heather Cox Richardson put it on her website and we put it on our website. Um, the fact is that he is attacking Milley. Uh, Milley said uh, that, you know, he would probably go to jail if Trump were elected again. Um, and so and this is a problem because you can see that he's still trying to corrupt the military. And the military may be corruptible. If he gets into office, he will spend a lot of time and energy corrupting the military, making it work for him, using the Insurrection Act, as he tried before, and um, and controlling the country that way. Just like Mussolini, just like Hitler. Yeah. You know, we only have a few minutes left. And I, I before we end the show, I, I've got to bring up uh, the news story that came up this week about um, former Trump chief advisor, uh, General John Kelly. Yeah, if you remember back in 2020, we did a show, um, and it was based on the Atlantic story written by Jeffrey Goldberg. And in that story, he mentioned that his source uh, specifically was told the following about the dead veterans, the 1800 Marines in World War I that gave their lives uh, in the Bella Wood area of France, and uh, Trump's refusal to go see the grave sites at that time because he thought they were suckers. And then uh, we had the area in France, uh, the En Mound area, and um, again, grave sites of World War I American soldiers in the ground, heroes, veterans, and he called them losers. And then at Arlington, uh, in front of General John Kelly, his son was in that ground, uh, killed in action in the Afghanistan uh, a war. And uh, this was Section 60 of Arlington Graveyard. And uh, Trump looked down at the graves and said, I don't get it. I don't see what they got out of it. Uh, and then just recently uh, was mentioned, and we didn't know this, 
that Trump didn't want any of the disabled amputees anywhere near the camera. And Trump has said, um, it doesn't look good for me that he didn't want um, disabled veterans to be in uh, eyesight of anyone. Uh, there's a lot of veterans in the GOP. There's a lot of veterans that are mega GOP. Yet I know that for veterans, that time that they served this country and served it well uh, is a big pride point in their life. It's a huge point of identity. How does that identity conflict now go in line with, we now know the source of that 2020 article in the Atlantic was indeed General John Kelly. We all suspected it, but we didn't have confirmation of it because it was a, a protected source, as most journalism is. Your sources are protected. Uh, how, how do those veterans of the GOP reconcile or wrestle with confirmation that Donald Trump's a monster and he could care less about veterans and he couldn't care less about their sacrifice? Um, Jay, your thoughts. I always uh, think first of bone spurs. I think first that his father set him up during Vietnam to be a draft dodger and get a phony opinion from a, a phony doctor in Queens um, <clears throat> to get him off the hook because of some uh, fabricated bone spur, one of the many lies that they shared together. And so he never went to Vietnam. It was chicken. And, <clears throat> and that has pervaded, you know, uh, that same attitude that got him uh, exempted from military service back in the time of Vietnam uh, demonstrates the view that his father had and that he had, um, you know, to uh, a cynical, terribly cynical view to dump on the military and our tradition and our history and our constitution. It's all connected. And, I, and it also goes back to uh, life in high school where you, you take an adverse position to everything and you make yourself powerful by doing that. So, <clears throat> yes, there are people in the military who are very conservative, right-wing, and members of his, of his base. I think that's clear enough. But some of them are generals. You know, Mark Milley uh, was embarrassed to be uh, at the Lafayette Park incident. And afterward, he said, gee, I was embarrassed to be there. I was being used. And presidents should not use generals for that. But Mark Milley was there. He went on that march in Lafayette Park. Why did he say something before? It's a question of timing. And if you look back at Kelly, Kelly was there. He was there as a member of uh, Trump's advisors and cabinet. It took him how many years? I mean, it was a, a half step to write the article. It took him how many years to actually come out on it? So, uh, yes, okay, thank you very much for revealing all that. But why so late? What happened to you? You know, you're a guy who would put himself in harm's way, risk your life for the American ideal, but you won't sign your name on the article. What kind of chicken is that? So I'm not Boy. terribly, I'm not terribly impressed with the, the senior military officers. They can be corrupted. They were corrupted, and they can be corrupted again in large numbers by using the the same bag of tricks uh, that uh, Trump used before, and that he has used on other. Uh, federal organizations before to gut them and to make them his. And as I said before, there's a substantial risk that if he takes office again, uh, he will do that to the American military, despite these late statements by people like Milley and Kelly. Great point, Jay. You know, I remember distinctly uh, many veteran groups and veterans saying, well, it's an unnamed source uh, that uh, Jeffrey Goldberg is basing this story on. And uh, because it's unnamed, it, it, it lacks credibility. Uh, if you remember Donald Trump's words after the article was published, and by the way, he was horribly embarrassed by, by it. Uh, he wasn't happy that that story made out, got out. Uh, he said, what kind of monster would say such things? That's a direct quote from Donald Trump. It's a, it's well, guess what? Guess what? What kind of monster would say those things? And I believe General John Kelly, and I believe the article back in 2020 in The Atlantic, and I believe they hit it spot on. And Donald Trump, once again, self-confessed who he really is and what kind of monster would say such things. And so we grew up in, Yeah, go ahead. When we grew up in Queens, uh, there was a thing called, and I've, I've told you this before, ranking. And ranking was kind of a contest of insults. And, and uh, whatever the other guy said, you, 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 you were challenged to make an insult that was more, more uh, 
insulting. And that's exactly what, what happens here. You, you, uh, you, you're insulted. The truth comes out about you. So you insult the other guy. And that's what he always does. Now, the point I was going to make here in the last few minutes of our show uh, is, that, is that Trump can do this. And largely because the people who heard Kelly speak, the people who have heard what really happened, and this is not limited to the military context that we're talking about, they forget. And Trump knows this. Trump knows that the fickle finger of the media moves on. And if something negative happens to him on day one, by day five, it's forgotten. And the base will forget anything negative that happened to him, um, any revelation along these lines, and they will listen to him going forward. And that's what he's got to hold on to. And to do that, he uses his ranking mechanism um, by attacking the people who reveal what he did. So, uh, you know, you could say that uh, the military should be really sore about his remarks and his lack of loyalty to the people who put their lives on the line. But in fact, they're going to forget. They forget everything, and he knows they're going to forget. He moves the needle, entertains them with something else. It's the power of distraction. Well, I'm going to go soak my head in some cold water after this show, because... I'm sorely depressed. Um, okay, last question. For the Seichel Carney uh, show barker, the fascist wannabe, how should Republicans look at their vote for if Trump's the party's nominee? Uh, just go along because to get along? Or uh, put your critical thinking power, powers in a closet and don't be a critical thinker? What's in store for the GOP that aren't Trump MAGA GOP that they're just GOP folks, um, how do they get through 2024 and how do they vote? You're talking about the general election in 2024. I am. Well, you know, it goes back to a number of things that we talked about today. One is uh, the, the GOP people, a lot of them are, are thinking uh, about the GOP 20 years ago and they're loyal to it. And they haven't noticed that it has completely morphed into a fascist organization that supports only Trump. Um, and all of them, and they don't see the difference. So how do you how do you correct that? How do you clear that up? Well, um, you can have everybody saying the GOP isn't what it was. That's not enough. Um, actually, I think what you need is a new party. You need a new leader, and you need a good Democratic candidate. You know, you and I have talked about this before. Look at the headlines every day. Uh, look at uh, MSNBC, which, by the way, Trump has threatened big time. He's going to destroy it. If he's elected, um, look at look at all the media that we look at anyway, and it's it's dominated by 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 Trump. You you hardly you hardly hear about exactly what the, uh, Biden is doing in his quote campaign. You know how's he doing? Um, he he's getting you know twenty percent of the attention by the media, not eighty. Trump is getting eighty or ninety every time he does a, a scowl on his face. You know, the media is fascinated with it all day long. And he's getting he's getting what he wants. He's getting out there. You know, just spell my name right. That kind of, you know, approach. And he's always done that. He did that in real estate in New York. That's what he did. So I think the media has got to correct itself. And they have got to stop with this uh, both sides, both sidesism, you know, that that's been reported. Um, and, and of course, uh, uh, we've talked about this before. Biden doesn't have the energy. It may be too late to make a switch, but we really need a stronger, more invigorated candidate on the Democratic side who will match up with Trump. We don't have that. So, and, you know, these vectors and factors and phenomena are not pointing in a good direction, I'm sorry to say. And I don't think that the GOP um, has, got, has got Trump's number. I don't think that the voters have Trump's number um, because he keeps on entertaining them. And this is the biggest, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, show, reality show that, that the world has ever seen. And it entertains an awful lot of people. All right, Jay, thank you for your comments. We'll leave that there. Um, thank you for accurately describing and defining today's GOP. If there's any folks out there watching this show, why don't you opine? 
I'd like to hear from you uh, because convince me that we're wrong because I don't think we are. And to uh, my last comment is, uh, to use Donald Trump's word is, what kind of monster would say such things? Well, when it comes to our heroes, our dead veterans, I don't care if it's World War I, II, Vietnam conflicts, Afghanistan, Middle East, any of those conflicts, uh, to say such things about dead heroes uh, is beyond reproach. And there's a special place somewhere where Donald Trump belongs for those comments. Can I you know, add no. one more point? Yes, Think about what happened in Europe in the 30s. Think about how the lives of ordinary citizens changed. Think about how the rug was pulled under them, their families, their civil liberties, and their lives. Think about that, because those matters are at issue if he is reelected. Good point. And think about, if you're going to vote for Donald Trump, think about why you're going to do that. Thank you, Jay. I'm Tim Apicello for American Issues Take One. Why don't you join us next week? And until then, aloha.